Hello, hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Natural20, and you are watching Fire Emblem Three Houses, Crimson Flower Maddening. I am joined at this commentary booth once again by another amazing special guest commentator. The one, the only, the incredible, the Hunt Eleven. Hunt, how are you doing today? Hi, my name is Hunt Eleven. I've been playing Fire Emblem games for about... Oh, wow. Uh, 15 years or so with the first one that came over to the States. I was, of course, very excited to hear about Three Houses, and so I was on release and played it pretty much from the moment it came out until I beat, I'd fully beaten it twice. And since then, I've been kind of picking away at the game and the various other outs up until today. That's amazing. So uh, we've got Hunt joining us for the LP, and... I'm excited to run through basically uh, chapter two. Uh, and this is going to be all of chapter two, which I've managed to condense down to about half an hour of uh, recording. I'm very pleased with myself. It was good. Looking yeah. forward to seeing it. Yeah, so broadly speaking, we'll just be running through uh, the a little bit a little bit of the uh, monastery, but mainly the actual chapter itself and the battle map there. Nice. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And we begin in the monastery on, I think, the second mandated exploration day that you've got. Uh, not much so, going on here, really. I mean, like, you've done, once you've done the monastery, like, once or twice, like, you've done it all before. Yeah, pretty much. So I've got, like, a few ideas about how you deal with the monastery in, like, the month cycle uh, to come up. But right now, it's too sparse, and I don't have enough. Uh, teaching points to actually do anything. <laughs> Sorry. That said, I did do the important <laughs> thing, which is uh, feeding the cats. Thanks. Yeah. A lot more active. You're doing like a new game plus or later on in the game when oh you actually own. have the teaching points sure. to eat like five meals, recruit like half the, and recruit half the cost. Right now, I can't do anything like that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that being said, you do have access to Abyss, and that means that you can recruit the Ashen Wolves. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm recruiting Yuri, uh, and I'm going to be recruiting Constance as well, because I have plans for them in this LP. Uh, okay, makes sense. And the Wolves themselves are actually very, very powerful early on. Uh, they're, they're very good units to begin with, uh, as things go, but uh, they start at level 3, Whereas the rest of your house will start at level one, unless you got them levels during the mock battle. Ah, yeah. Which makes them uh, a little bit of the buffer, and I quite like having them uh, very, very early. Because uh, they can get things like the noble class, or the peasant class, or the commoner class, I believe. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the plus five HP is like gold dust in this. Oh, I can imagine, like, in hard... You can get by without it, but Blitik, yeah, you want all, every edge you can get. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, I, I just like, I especially like Constance. Yuri, I'm a bit mad on, but Constance is very cool. Uh, There's bits of you that I like, other bits that, things you did with, like, Bernadetta, which I'm just, like, not so sure about. <laughs> uh... So here, this is the first uh, skirmish battle that you're forced into. And we have me uh, proving why uh, I don't play Fire Emblem games from Before Awakening. Uh, because what I do is I accidentally end turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have Divine Pulse yet. So uh, this is Ferdinand dying <laughs> and me having to repeat an hour of work. <laughs> Uh, well, you could always go back to Shadows of Valencia, which does, ha which is the first game with Divine Pulse. Oh, well, the cogwheel system, which is the same thing. Yeah, I've been thinking of getting to that at some point, but uh, instead I went with my reset uh, here. <laughs> and uh, now we're dealing with the actual map itself. So uh, the important yeah. thing to note is that when you get here, you get the, di the Divine, uh, you get the buffer, basically. So you can uh, roll back time with Divine Pulse. But obviously you're in quite an awkward starting position because these guys are able to attack you uh, pretty much immediately. 
Uh, and so your start is quite important here. I remember having issues with this, like the very first time I played, even with hard, just like the first turn, he's like, Yeah, you're all trapped on the bridge and your units aren't quite strong enough to really handle them cleanly. Yeah, definitely. It's a huge issue. So, the broad plan for this map is to utilize the bridge as much as I can because it forms a natural choke point. So this is uh, and you can use that bottleneck on the far side of the bridge where you start. Let's to lure enemies in and then just put them into kill zones. Be careful or the cornered mice might bite us. And in yeah. maddening, this is much, much easier as it turns out, because the enemies move like a lot of packs will just run at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they want to encourage aggression, not just yeah. oh, I can just turtle around Dorothea for fifty turns to get everyone healed up again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's what they're trying to do by getting these guys to rush you. Uh but for me, what that leads to is just more turtling. <laughs> so, uh, Yuri here. So, the unfortunate problem is that that archer is fast enough to double absolutely everybody apart from Yuri and Bailey. Uh So, we're starting off here by setting up Yuri uh, at the edge of that archer's range, which is three, because of course it is. And the archer has poison strike, because of course he does. Uh, and the idea will be that the archer will run a forward attack Yuri, and I'm just positioning all my guys so that they're on the edge of the attack range, and the idea is they'll fall in and murder the dude once he dares to attack us. It's actually kind of funny, like, what are we... Oh, God. Uh, it's he does, it kind of speeds up the process where you need to do like these type of tactics. Like, these are the type of things I would do, like, it's a late game where there's real dangerous enemies, but with Lunatic, everyone's dangerous, so this happens right from the start. Yeah, absolutely. So you're, you're taking on strategies you would take on a lot earlier, and this is a trying map. It's, I think, one of the harder maps in the game, uh, on Maddening especially, uh, because you have such little resources. Now, the Black Eagles obviously have the cheat code that's Dorothea for this, uh, mm. but we'll get to her later at exactly what her value is. Uh, for the moment, though, like the idea is that you fall in on these enemies, and a big thing that you'll find in Maddening especially is that you'll use uh, combat arts a lot more, because especially early, they hit very, very hard and they have much better accuracy, and that is a thing that you're lacking. So here I'm like, well, if Hubert misses, I lose a Divine Pulse immediately. Yeah. Well, really not the worst, because it's the start of the map, but it's still like, do I really want to go through all this again? Yeah, exactly. And I know myself, so I'll just sit there dealing with the setup for another uh, five minutes. And go, well, I could do it a little bit better, couldn't I? Yeah. I think this is why I definitely, like... I deeply enjoyed what they did with Hard for... Oh, God, the bonus maps. Uh, for the DLC, yeah? Was like, yeah, for the DLC, yeah. But I think Manning just didn't quite sit with me. Like, he was just a bit too much about stats. Yeah, especially early when you don't have anything. Like, it's quite difficult to break through all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, you can see there that I got a huge value from using Tempest Lance. And so the idea that... I... Yeah, go for it. So it is good in general, but... I mean, that's the boss is not, like, the first arch in the game. Yeah, true. Uh, and here, the idea is, that I think I have at this point, is I'm going to wall in with Byla. Yeah, here we go. I'm trying to find a kill here. I think it does exist mm -hmm. with Ray Strike and a Steel Sword. There you go. That is that. So technically, I'm messing up. If Byleth didn't have his shield on, he wouldn't get doubled. But it wouldn't matter anyway, because the enemy is going to put for Ferdinand as it is. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I'm doing here is I'm equipping Yuri with a bow so that when the enemy attacks Ferdinand, 
Yuri is also in range and provides that uh, support bonus. Okay. Well, is there any logic towards who supports who when it comes to the campaign map, or is it just fuck who gets assigned to it until you get support ranks going? Well, so the logic is that you want as many people over... I don't do this properly here, but you want as many people as possible overlapping the square the enemy attacks from as possible. Because I think up to three extra people will give you an extra 15% hit in total. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I cut here because I'm like, there's a single enemy, we gang up and murder him. Uh, it, it isn't very eventful. Whereas here, now we've got another pack rushing us. Uh... So you'll see here that the pack is a little bit different. The one that's out in front is actually outside of the range of his archer. So the strategy here will be that we bait him into an attack and then we fall on the remainder. I am Ferdinand von Eyer. And this is kind of like the strategy that the map is going to use for a while where you bait in these packs of three units you kill one or two, and then you fall down on the last one, uh, as you need to. Uh, the difficulty is, and where this gets harder and harder, is you start, start running out of healing charges, and over time, uh, you end up in a bad position. So I finished my setup, and here comes the dude in to hit Ferdinand. But again, this is fairly typical, right? I have all my units available, and I just fall in on them. Yeah, but as you said earlier, you have Dorothea, which is that you can technically heal forever, so... Yeah. Yeah. Dorothea gets a terrible level up, gets dex and res. I'm very <laughs> disappointed in her. As long as you can still survive, that's all that really matters. Yeah, true. Ferdinand gets a better, bit of a better level up. He doesn't get strength, but he does get speed, which is a rarity on him. Oh. It is always kind of weird seeing like the early levels up where they don't really have any real like bonuses to their growth rates yet. So it always feels like kind of see where they go for, but it always also feels very like anemic in terms of that growth. Yeah, true. And I I, I started playing with Fire Emblem Awakening, which has billions of growths everywhere for absolutely everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here. Um, I believe the archers actually have one extra movement on the infantry. So, the farther away you get and the farther away packs are from when they move in, the easier it is to just get one guy to lag behind. So I give myself a think about this. I'm like, well, do I want to take this on the bridge or do I want to take this a little bit further back? And I think here I opt for a little bit further back. Uh... Because the bridge is a bit of a double-edged sword here. If they park themselves in the middle of it, then you're in a lot of trouble because you can only get four attackers on them. And then they can murder you back because they're maddening enemies. Oh. So I, I slowly fall back here. <laughs> like, well, where's the best place to move? I don't know. Oh. As long as you use, like, ability to just, like, slowly trip them down and, like, pull out of the cascade, which is the nice thing about this map, because it's not moving in packs, but it isn't, like, the entire enemy army. Yeah, true. Uh, so, I'm thinking, can we take down this archer? And there is a way. And I think it's if we form the uh, Ferdinand slash Byleth wall again. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'm thinking about doing it with Edelgard. I forget at this point exactly what I did. Now, that would technically be suboptimal, but if I moved Byleth into the position of the thief, it would be okay. So let's see what I end up doing. I end up just killing them all, as it turns out. There you go. Yeah. That's what I did. Um, I have to guess, like, you move Byleth next to Edelgard and then push up from there. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I did, I think. Uh, so that's the end of all the packs that rush you for the moment. Uh, and so now you've got to kind of pick off stationary dudes, which is 
a little bit easier in some ways, but these packs have uh, guys that hit quite hard as well. And again, like on other houses, uh, you're running low on resources. You don't have that much healing left, uh, so you don't really know what to deal with. Myself, I'm just standing everyone around Dorothea whenever I get a chance to rest, and I'm getting all my healing back. Uh, but for the other houses, what you tend to do is run lots of vulnerabilities across your army, and then just drink up whenever uh, you run out of health. So, Dorothea's value to the Black Eagles, and I just take them down pretty easily, uh, Dorothea's value to the Black Eagles isn't so much the unlimited healing, so much as the fact that she saves you a lot of money early. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, that would make sense, because the Volume Plan is technically more efficient, like, turn count-wise, but at the same time, the money spent on Volume is not spending on, like, weapons or seals, which you need to, like, keep up with the enemy power scale. Exactly, and especially early, having steel weapons everywhere, for example, is uh, pretty handy as things go, because especially if you're using skills, for example, Constance misses an 81% chance. Uh... Thanks, Constance. They've been actually pretty good at not missing so far, so I'm happy with them. But, uh... Still a bit soft. That's, that's, that's happened some, yeah, it has happened sometime. Yeah. I'd rather it be here than when there are three enemies in my face trying to bite them, uh, bite my face off. Then he's just trying to scrabble. Okay, so is there any way I can save this, or should I just save myself the time and use a turn wheel? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Yuri. Again, oh. like, you got, you got, you got speed, it's okay, but come on. You got speed, like, if it was just Dex, and that would be, like, an awful level up, but yeah, that's still pretty bad. <laughs> like, who do I want to kill this guy? Uh, Birdman, let's go. Yeah, so the big thing uh, I'll point out as well is that in my prep for this, Almost everybody who's a physical attack character, and most of the magical attack characters as well, have bows. Because bows are really good. Yeah. It's definitely a game where they did them right. Yeah, I think they've got real value in this game, and they just get stronger over time as well. In the older games, they could work just fine, but definitely more of a balancing act and they could definitely uh, have issues as like okay i can get a lot of value out of like javelins and hand axes yeah absolutely uh whereas here they just they're very accurate they hit very hard and they come from range so it's kind of everything that you want early mm -hmm. and i'm prepping Gyleth. I i've got a chess key somewhere in here so the one that i stole from the enemy doesn't really matter too much Yes, and so that arch, I wanted to do that because once you kill that pack, that archer starts moving. Um, which ironically means that I'm just going to turtle up here and wait for him to come towards me. Uh, again, like, the name of the game in this map is just being patient. Uh, you'll get yourself into a lot of trouble if you try and rush it down, but if you don't, then it's a, it's a very predictable map, basically. This one I've been honestly does play a lot like hard, where it's like it's still the same thing. It's that in hard you could actually split up your groups, but in yeah. Lunatic, no, that's gonna end very badly. Yeah, it, so in hard, the idea would be that you would split one group, send them north, split the other group, send them uh, over to the west, and you'd be able to take on everything at once. But here, you're just not doing that because uh, you don't want to take on more than three enemies at once. Uh, three is almost too much for you all the time. Mm -hmm. So what I've done here is I've counted the movement on that archer. And I'm pre-positioning myself to be just outside the archer's range. Because I feel like oh, that's a very smart idea. And so this way, every one of my units in theory will just fall on this archer and murder him on uh, his turn. And that's the plan. And I think I'm being very, very smart here. I really do. Just be careful, especially when you don't have to risk somebody getting hit. Yeah. Well, then the archer is a bit of a smart aleck and he goes, well, what if I walk over here? Now only three of your units can attack me. 
I do manage to kill him, but I, I wanted to put that in because uh, that archer is much, much smarter than I am. So here, oh. this archer won't move, um, which is inconvenient because he has three range and you have two range. Uh, so in theory, if you just stay in range of him, he can just run around infinitely, picking at you while you can't shoot back. But uh, what this doesn't really account for is if you let him hit you once and then move out of range. Because then he gets and he confused. Did. He, then he put, then the, he's pulled onto you and then will actually t pursue. Yeah, he'll pursue you and then you sit down, laugh at him and beat him up. There you go. Amazing accuracy at that range though. Yeah, so I dispose of him. Uh, now, if you look at the formations here, you don't really want to be attacking from uh, the east because uh, what will happen is the dudes on the, in the west will fall on you and try and murder you. That said, if you position Edelgard on that square, uh, the boss screams at his units and they all aggro onto you and decide that they want to... Uh, run up the stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty handy as things go, because that means that uh, they put themselves in a one square corridor and you surround all your units. <laughs> you surround that corridor with all your units. Always nice to give them a taste of that. Exactly. Uh, and also of importance, the bishop uh, there only has four movements. So he separates out as well, and then the archer has six movement or something like that. The the fighter has five. They just spread out, and you take them down one by one. Uh, and frankly, I cut it because it was obvious what was going to happen. At a certain point, like you show, like you, you divide up the enemy, you eat them like piecemeal, and then you kill them, like yeah. You know, there's not that much to this apart from that. Uh, I wish there was. More further future maps will be slightly more exciting. <laughs> but uh, I think this one actually uh, scares people a lot because it is. If you don't know how the AI is going to act, especially and what to do with them, it's a very very intimidating map to deal with, even after you've dealt with them up battle. And so now I'm just kind of sweeping up the dregs here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like. One, everyone versus the last mook, and then it's just surround the boss time. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so what I've noticed is that there's a golden uh, square there. So for those who don't know, what the golden squares do is they activate if you've got online mode enabled. And that means that um, another player's character died on that location. Uh, so if you stand a unit there, they get uh, experience. And so what I've realized is that if I stand Dorothea on that square and kill the boss, uh, she will get enough experience to level up. And so that's my plan. Uh, but for the moment, I need to kill this guy first. And it's important to note, by the way, that if you aggro this guy, the boss doesn't aggro with him. Uh, as I thought the boss just stays still, like he didn't move. So in Maddening, the bosses will often move to the full extent of their attack range to go and murder you. Okay. Uh, so you can see here I've got Costas's, uh threat range highlighted. And it's much, much larger than uh, the two range you'd expect from him normally. Mm -hmm. Or maybe one range that he normally has. Because I don't think he has a range weapon. No, I don't know. No hand axe. Like, it's very much like a you can wait him if you want to. Well, how was that? And you can see there, by the way, the example of what I was talking about. Since I switched Dorothea and Ferdinand's weapons to ranged weapons, uh, they gave Edelgard an extra 10% accuracy on that uh, shot that she had. Mm. Which is I got cool. a really nice level up as well. Yeah, definitely. So here, Yuri's just going to bait the boss while he's on the uh, defense tile. That's Yuri on the defense tile, not the boss, who's also on a different kind of defense tile. 
And yeah, we just set up a surround again and we get ready uh, to take him down. I mean, like, what is he willing to move? It makes them, at the same time, a bit more dangerous. And like the map itself is going on, but when you're actually trying to kill them, they off the defense panel and suddenly so yeah. much easier to actually like, just deal with them. Yeah, absolutely. I think the it seems intimidating and then it turns out to be much less intimidating than it actually is. The only place where this is different is when it's Nemesis at the end of Verdant, Verdant Wind, where it's near impossible to move. He, can't, he doesn't move off his tile until you attack him and then he gains all his movement and kills everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that does not sound like fun to deal with. Oh god, that's how I lost an Ingrid on the final map of the Verdant Wind. <laughs> I was like, wait, he can move? <laughs> so... Do you really think being born a commoner gives you the right to kill? Despicable. Yeah, I won't often get special boss dialogue, but on this mission... Uh, I do get the uh, the fun of Edelgard talking to her her minion <laughs> and telling him. What do you mean? <laughs> and telling him he, uh, she's going to murder him. <laughs> you it can't be the mercenary from before. It's the one that pals with the knights. Uh, I'll kill you and your pesky. Friend. Hey, this is not no. your day. <laughs> You know what? I don't think I've ever actually got that dialogue because I've never had Bio fight the boss on this map. Well, now you know. There you go. Uh, and this is me painstakingly, painstakingly getting him down to three HP, <laughs> so that Dorothea <laughs> can do exactly three damage with a bow because she's out of uh, exactly three damage with the bow to kill him. Because especially in the common class. Well, to the pre-magic classes, like, nobody has any real, like, spell repositories. Yeah, they all have half charges on their spells. Uh, this is why leveling Dorothea up is actually quite important to me. Because getting her to five means before the next map I'll be able to class change her. And that'll give her double spells, which makes her a lot stronger. Yes. That means she starts getting proper magic growth. Exactly. Oh, Dorothea, those are oh, the exact God. stats we don't want you to get. Well, well this isn't bad, but the rest, hmm, yeah. not so much. Uh, so that is the end of that map. It was pretty easy, but uh, I say easy. It's a pain of a map to begin with. Uh, you need lots of vulnerabilities on the other houses, but Dorothea is pretty great otherwise. Of course. Uh, but I kept this cutscene in purely for one reason. The area was covered in ruins, each more that is. curious than the last. Uh, which is Edelgard leading Byleth to uh oh, yes. uh telling Byleth things that she already knows the answers to. The Valley civilization must have flourished and fallen in the distant past. It's definitely kind of fun seeing some of these cutscenes again. Because, okay, wow, yeah. Oh. He was not subtle about this in the slightest. Who do you think lived here? And like, you, the, initially, when you first come here, the bottom option seems like a joke. And then she's happy with it. It's possible they weren't even human. <laughs> uh, not even human. I wonder what that means. No idea. Who could tell? And there we go. That is uh, the end of our fun recording here. And that's the end of chapter two. That's two, uh, two down, um, 16 more to go? Yeah, 16 more to go. Uh, they get harder still. So uh, to me, the hardest map is around, what, chapter six or so? Uh, and then it starts tapering off a little bit. But for the moment, uh, we're still working on limited resources. And soon we'll get like the full like monastery cycle to deal with, all that kind of stuff as well, which I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was chapter two. Uh, and that is basically uh, that, as far as I can tell. So, Hunt, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, not really. Like, it's still the start of the game, so nothing that exciting is going on. Like, 
later chapters, you actually have resources and like the skills and the speed to make your characters interesting. But now, like, we're these students running around with like swords, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so with that, Hunt, thank you so, so much for coming along. It was a pleasure. And uh, I hope to have you along in the future. I should be on this whenever you need me. Perfect. Uh, and thank you all very, very much for watching along, and we will catch you all on the next set of episodes.